Hey, hello everyone and welcome to Extreme Graphics Tech. My name is Angelo and in today's video I'm going to be talking about an update for the Arc Intel Arc 750. As you know, I've been someone that has been very um, vocal about my support to the Intel series of, of cards, especially because of the time when they came out. You know, there was this whole GPU, crypto, this whole situation, prices rising, and even though initially it didn't have the best price, it came out very soon, and I think the performance was very good. However, it was plagued with some issues with the drivers on some old games and newer games. However, I have to say that I think that by today's standards, the drivers are very, very polished and very well done, especially for new games. There are some old games that are still going to have some issues, but in general, if you are planning to play new games, DirectX 11, 12, and so on games, the ARC 750 is still a very uh, commendable GPU. And the reason I'm being very vocal and supportive of these cards is because I really want Intel to succeed, because I think we need a third player in the GPU market. Even though Nvidia has 80% of the market right now, and AMD is you know, struggling to get a share of that, I think if we can you know, split the numbers better and people start seeing Intel as a viable option, then you know, uh, competition can help us all to maybe lower the prices. But that will depend on what battle makes the next generation of GPUs from Intel do. And I hope they do really, really well. And Intel, if you ever see this video, please send me one because <laughs> I don't have money to keep buying more and more GPUs. And if you want me to review one when they come out, then subscribe and like to in this video at least to help me grow and maybe, um, you know, either get the monetization from YouTube to buy it or Intel sees me as a big enough player to send me one. In any case, um, on today's video, we are going to be testing how the Intel Arc 750 be, uh, behaves in very new games and not some very new ones, just to test how is it on 2020, 2024. So let's see the benchmark and I'll come back with my conclusions. Okay, I'm going to start this test with Doom Eternal. I know this is an old game, and but I don't remember if I tested this before, but especially because what I want to test now is that Vulcan is running correctly and also with RT on. And as we know, Doom Eternal works with RT and Vulcan. And as you can see here, everything is running very smoothly, no problem whatsoever, and 1440p with on Nightmare level. This game doesn't have XESS or FSR, so we can use those technology. But as you can see, it looks and runs very well, all things considered. I think the ARC 750 is doing amazingly because the ray tracing is not doing much and the Vulkan API is not showing any sign of any particular error running on this GPU. Now, when we come to Jedi Survivor, I also know this one is like a very, uh, it's an old game, but the reason I'm testing it here now, and this is going to be like the last old game I'm going to be testing is because it's a game that is, uh, even today is not very well optimized. So what happens if you want to play? Because the game is very good. The problem is the optimization. Well, as you can see using 1080p native medium, the game is running close to 60 FPS at all times. And I tested different areas of the game and sometimes it can go as low as 50 and sometimes it can go a little bit higher but it runs quite well all things considered this is a game that is hard to run at 60 because well the game is not very well optimized and, CP and uses all the cpu core so yeah this is what you get and the games run decently enough now, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart is one of my favorite games. As I finished this game on the PlayStation 5, but on PC, it looks so much better because you can activate different ray tracing options additionally to the reflection. And that's why I'm testing it here. So as you can see, the game uh, using every single RT option on, on medium with XCSS on dynamic, it holds a very steady 60 FPS. Yes, there are going to be some areas that the game can go down, but I think it's more due to like um, RAM limitation, VRAM limitation or traversal stuttering. But in general, the games run quite good, all things considered, as you can see here. Of course, you can use 10, 1440p EXS balance or, uh, you know, lower the RT uh, effects. That depends on you. But I think in, in terms of ray tracing, the game has passed the test. 
Now, one of the newest game I'm testing is Horizon Forbidden West. As you can see here, this is running a 1440p XESS balance on medium, and I love that more and more games are including the XESS, especially the PlayStation games poor, because this is a much better uh, upscaling than FSR. Now, as you can see here, the game is running quite steady or quite close to 60 FPS and most of the time. However, if you use XESS dynamic, for some reason, it goes worse than using XESS balance. So I would recommend you to experiment and play with that because sometimes it's not going to give you exactly because you will think, well, dynamic should always keep me at 60, but that's not exactly what I found out, at least in this game. So I'm not quite sure why is that. I think maybe related to the VRAM, not having, you know, enough capacity to do the changes on the fly. Now here we have Avatar uh, Frontiers of Pandora that is one of the most beautiful and winner of the best graphic from Digital Foundry last year. And as you can see here, we're playing a 1440p FSR balance. Unfortunately, this game does not support XESS, so this is the only thing we can use. But I found out that even uh, in any situation, the game will keep mostly above 60 FPS, even when flying different areas using this configuration. Of course, you can be a little more aggressive with the FSR, less aggressive, uh, but I wouldn't recommend going the lower than medium because most of the shadows disappear making the game look very flat however in this situation as you can see the game is running quite good um, I will say that the ARC 750 is behaving very nicely even on a, such a recent title uh, another title that is very recent is Ghost of Tsushima but this is a PlayStation 4 game essentially however it's still running very good all things considered we're running a 1440p XCSS quality with high preset and the game is running quite good remember that the preset that this game probably uses on the PlayStation 4 is around medium so we're playing a little bit higher more resolution we are playing with um, EX XCSS so I think all things considered the game is running quite good and as you can see the GPO is not even being fully utilized so even on other areas you're going to have very good behavior the reason is because if i put the game on very high for some reason it does uses and goes down of 60 from time to time so i prefer to set it on high and keep that a steady frame rate finally the last game i'm going to be testing and is one of the latest is hell play 2 as you know is an unreal 5 game and one of the most uh, beautiful and stunning game you can find out there and as you can see here the intel is still behaving quite good it's not keeping the 60 fps steady and uh, maybe i should have been a little bit more aggressive with the exs xcss uh, I think medium and low will still ver look very good on this game, so that will have help. Or maybe go to 1440p XCSS balance with medium quality will also could have help. But well, these are the results, and I think they're phenomenal and much better than you can get on a Series S or Series X console. So yeah, you're playing at 60 and not at 30 like in those consoles. Well, as you can see, I think all the games we tested they re ran really, really well considering that this is a 3060 kind of level of a GPU. I think all the games run extremely well and especially because Intel did some things very right from the very beginning and that's for example ray tracing support is very good as you were able to to see in the Ratchet and Clank game and I have to say that the first iteration of Intel GPUs have better ray tracing performance than the uh, equivalent of AMD car so this is just the first generation and they already nailed ray tracing is really really good but not just that they supported and brought to the table XESS as, as we know is an AI supported upscaler on the on the same level as the LSS not as good but quite close it's much better than FSR for sure and the best part is that that XCSS uses two pads and even on your NVIDIA or AMD card you can use XCSS it's not going to be as good or as performant as using because it needs some of the units available on the Intel card but at least it's an option to have there so the fact that a, a Intel on the first try wanted to bring every single toy to the table like you know XCSS technology, ray tracing and good uh, rasterization performance talks about you know the ambition that intel has another the only downs uh, i will say problem with this from my point of view is that the power consumptions are not the best this is a power hungry car all considered on the level of what it is um but this is a problem that intel has been facing even with cpu so i don't know what is <laughs> going on with intel and electricity consumption so let's uh, hope this improves with battle mage but other than that honestly if you find this car which is now getting harder and harder to find because it seems that 
Intel is discontinuing them and even other brands like ASRock or uh, Acer are not producing them anymore at least not local, not here. I haven't been able to see it recently. If you find a car like this, like used or new at a decent price, depending on your country, this car is around $200. You can find it now to 20 new. So if you find it for that, it's not a bad choice, depending on what you want to play. And the other important part is to remember that your uh, motherboard and CPU have to support resizable bar okay that's a very important th otherwise you're going to lose like half the performance of the gpu so those two th things are very important having said that i think that the arc 750 in mid 2024 is a very good option very viable i couldn't see any weird behavior or problems with it the games ran very good everything was smooth i couldn't find any issue maybe the software is not the best but to be honest, I don't care too much about that. I just care about the performance and price. And I think the R750 is still a very viable option for any one of you out there looking for a new GPU to either build a second machine or to improve your old one. So hope you like this video. You subscribe, like, and all those things that helps to grow. Thank you very much and see you on the next video.